a successful pastor in the hood, you had to change your image. <laughs> so I used to be Pastor Phil, that was too soft in the South Bronx. <laughs> hey, Pastor Phil, you get jumped being Pastor Phil in the South Bronx. So I'm Doug Life. Doug Life. <laughs> So what I was explaining the last time I was on stage was that everything that I thought was a good thing is actually a bad thing in the hood. Everything I thought was a bad thing is actually a good thing in the hood. Everything I thought was a bad thing. When I started to pass, I thought things were like things like drugs and, and incarceration were bad things. In the hood, that's street cred. That's a good thing. And then everything that I thought was a good thing were actually bad things in the hood. Brother came up to me in church, this is a hard brother. He said, he said, Pastor Phil, he said, you know, uh, uh, I'm sure you had a, a good family upbringing. <laughs> this dude had a good family. He said, yeah, yeah, we, you know, we got dinner together. He's like, yo, this dude had dinner together with his family. Brady Bunch, Pastor Brady Bunch. <laughs> So your mother, he's like, your mother probably knew what your birthday was. You probably have birthday parties and you that's not a hard life, that's not a hard life. So I said, I gotta change my image. I gotta change my image. TL, baby, TL. So besides the image change, true story, I went out since last time I was on this stage and went and got a tattoo on my hand. True story. It says, true story, it says JN144. Got that tattoo because it sounds like I'm in a gang now. JN144 went to that same girl. I was like, 144. Okay. I actually got the tattoo because it's a wedding band tattoo and it's a matching wedding band tattoo. Got it with my wife. We got married 10 years ago. Woo! Only people that are trying to hang out, people not married. They're like, oh, I'm going to take this. Married people, they're like, that's 10 hard years. <laughs> My wife said, baby, let's do something we've never done. Uh, let's get matching wedding band mm -hmm. tattoos. That's and so we went to get, and so we, we went in, so JN144, what it stands for is that in the Bible, in John chapter 1, verse 44, my wife's name is Bethsaida, so it says in the Bible, Philip belongs to Bethsaida in the Bible. So, aww. That's all anybody who's dating. That's the people say, ah, oh, okay? Because if you marry, you got 10 hard years. That's what you're saying right now. So we go to the guy who's a tattoo artist, and he says, we say, okay, we do, we, she explains it, you know, John chapter 1, verse 44. So he tells us, why don't you do JN 144 to fit on your finger? And my wife was like, no, because we really want John 144. And he's like, no, but you have to put it. And she's back and forth. She's like, I really want John. And then I look at her, and I was like, how I look having the name John. <laughs> and she's like, no, I want John. And we're going back and forth. And then finally she looks at me, and she's like, that's true, because what if you end up in jail? <laughs> Like, that's not even funny. You know I got soft skin. <laughs> so she, she said, honey, let's, besides getting a tattoo, let's go to where we went on our honeymoon. So we go, we went to Cancun, Mexico. That's where we went on our honeymoon. So we went on to Cancun, Mexico. Yeah. I'm saying people that are talking right now. And we say 10 hard years. <laughs> And so they, we went on a honeymoon. So we went to the same spot, Cancun, Mexico. We went, we got there. It was a jacuzzi. It was champagne. There was flowers. There was my two kids. So my wife, leave them home. It's not a vacation, it's a job. She's like, no, let's take them. So she's trying to get me in a better mood. So she said, Phil, what we can do, let's go and take some, some, some photography. Let's go out on and just get one of the photographers from the resort, hire them. And then they were supposed to have some water on stage for me. Yo, come, so, so, can somebody give me some water? So anyway, so anyway, so they said, thank you, my brother. Clap while I drink this.
<laughs> so then, so I was like, all right, let's go take some pictures. So this photographer goes with my family, and she starts following us around. We go to the tree, we go to the, uh, we go to the beach, we go to the sand, and she's following my family. And then she does one thing. She tells my two daughters that are with us. She says. She says, girls, move to the side, because now I'm going to start taking some romantic pictures with your parents. And I look at her. I don't do no romantic pictures. <laughs> See, because I'm trying to, how many, how many couples that are dating? Any dating? Anybody dating in, in the house? Anybody dating? It's complicated. Anybody dating? <laughs> For all the brothers who are dating, any any brothers that are dating in the house? Any brothers, no, the brothers that are dating? Okay. How many of you got some advice? Be careful on these romantic photo shoots, okay? Because they will try to get you to do some real feminine stuff on these photo shoots, and many a good brother have had their manhood taken away on these romantic photo shoots. You know, you go on these romantic photo shoots and they'll try to set it up in a way and, and, and let me tell you, God will put something on the inside. There's a sensor that God puts on the inside. I'm about to start preaching right now. There's a sensor that God puts on the inside of you and it beats faster as you approach losing your manhood. The, the, the photographer will tell you and, and your girlfriend, go, go to the swings and sit down in the swings and all of a sudden, ding. Photographer will tell you, hold your girlfriend's hand. Beep, 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 beep. And the photographer will tell you, now swing your hands in the air. Don't do it, don't do it, don't lose your manhood. Don't lose your manhood. They'll say, let's take some pictures on the beach, and, and you're down on the beach, and they'll tell you, take your shoes off and, and roll off your pants. Beep. Beep. And then they'll say, hold your girlfriend's hand. Beep. Now swim through the room. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't don't go to the tree and paint the roof of the room. Don't do it. 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 Don't If it's something that my two little girls will do, don't do it. You a man, don't do it. <laughs> so me and my wife are there, so the photographer tells us, listen, I want you to put your heads together. She's trying to set us up. So me and my wife put our heads together, and then she tells us, and I want you guys to kiss. And I was like, I was like, I ain't kissing you. She was like, you better kiss me right now. I was like, no, I ain't kissing you. And we started pushing against each other. We was pushing against each other. Photographer was like this. He was like two rams coming into each other. And we was literally buddy heads. They told us when we were doing dating counseling that we were butt heads. We never knew we would be literally buddy heads. And, and, and this is, advice is not only for the brothers, if you're a sister and you're dating somebody, any sisters that are dating? Any sisters that are dating? You know, we just went like this. You put your hand up like that. You can't be ashamed of it. For the sisters that are dating, here's my advice. Things change. Things change. Now, if you're a married couple, 10 years, about 10 hard years, you know what I'm talking about. Things change. Okay? You know, things change. And this true story, I'm sitting in my office. <coughs> Start clapping. <laughs> hey, that's how TL does it. <laughs> this is true story, I'm sitting in my office. And some security comes into my office. There's service going on in the sanctuary. Security comes into my office and says, Pastor Phil, there's an emergency. True story. I'm like, who's Pastor Phil? I'm T.L. Nah, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. 
I'm assuming I just added it to make you laugh right now. <laughs> I come out of my office and I walk through the sanctuary. When I walk through the sanctuary, true story, there's EMT walking through the sanctuary, there's police officers walking through the sanctuary, and the hilarious part was police officers walking through the sanctuary, half the brothers in the church was like this, they had. And there's a room full of EMT and police officers and they have one of the young ladies in our church hooked up and they're checking her vital signs and it looks seems like she's okay. When everybody leaves and everything settles down, <coughs> I go to somebody and I said, what happened? Why, why, why was that? Did that whole happen? And they tell me the story. You know what the story was? That there was a young couple in the back, two people dating, a teenage couple in the back. And the girl tells the boyfriend, she's back there, they're cleaning up the room. And then all of a sudden she says, now she says, oh, I'm lightheaded, I'm lightheaded. The boy says, somebody give me a cell phone, somebody give me a cell phone. He dials 911 in the middle of service because his girlfriend was lightheaded. Let me tell you, sisters who are dating, let me just give you some advice. When you get married, things will change. Things will change. I know you got married. Try to tell your husband that you're lightheaded. Listen, ten years. All right. Your wife tells you you're lightheaded. That will cause an art. Your wife tells you you're lightheaded. Can you get your man? You look at your wife like, yeah, what's wrong with your legs? Something wrong with your legs? Get your legs from yourself. That will start an argument. You get married. You know when you dating is cute. When you get married, you say you lightheaded. That starts an argument. Okay, things change. Things change. Listen, even the music that the guy listens to changes. Changes after you get married. There's this song out right now that dating brothers are dedicating to girls all around the world that married men are not even listening to. <laughs> It's this song by Bruno Mars called Grenade. He says, I'll catch a grenade for you. Throw my hand on a plane for you. I'll jump in front of a train. Mary Brothers, listen to that. They're like, you expect me to catch an explosive device in my hand? You know what would happen to me if I caught an explosive device in my hand? I got a, I, this true story, I got upset one day at my wife because she passed me a letter and gave me a paper cut. I'm not holding a blade for you. I'm upset if you gave me a paper cut. That's 10 years. That's 10 years right there. <laughs> so, so I grew up in church. You know, that's another thing that's changed. I grew up in a Spanish Pentecostal church. <clears throat> and so my father's a pastor, like I said. I try to hide that because I'm in the middle. <laughs> I know my dad and he's a good father, but I try not to let a lot of people know why. <laughs> And so me and my father, we have conversations Sunday evenings. He come, I go over to the house and we'll talk about, he always asks me the same thing. He says, Phil, how is church? And I, no matter how much I try to explain to him that what he considers church is so much different, what we do here is so much different than what he does at his church. The people are different. You know, I, I'm pastoring the church now. And I, he doesn't know about Instagram or Facebook, but I, I'm trying to explain to him. I said, Dad, you don't know what it is to have members in your church that their their names on Instagram is Bronx Poppy Chulo and, <laughs> and, and Bubba Thirty Four. I said, Dad, you don't you don't really know you don't really live the life of a pastor until. <laughs> Yo, listen, this is true. I'm going to tell you, this is the truth. I'm telling my father. Yeah, I tell my father, listen, we're special. We have your season. We're special. Amen. Special. Amen. Listen, stop clapping. Stop clapping. Stop clapping. Stop clapping. Stop clapping. 
I'm going to say clap. Okay, clap right now. <laughs> I said, the season is so special, but listen, not the like God thinks you're special. I'm talking about short bus special. Gee. <laughs> yo, listen, yo, listen. These are things that have actually happened here at New Season. It's actually happened. I said, Dad, you don't know what it is to preach a sermon. To preach it in the middle of the sermon. In the middle of summer, and a dude walks in with a full-length fur coat. <laughs> Yes, it happened. That's true. Nothing like that. New season. I told my father, I said they were, they were promoting an event. There was an event. <coughs> they were promoting an event in our church. And so they made a little commercial. And at the end of the little commercial, they put that song, Call Me Maybe. And I told my father, the congregation was singing louder to Call Me Maybe than they had sung for the worship songs in the beginning of the service. It's special. <laughs> Listen, I came out one time, they, I was about to preach. They brought me out of my office, they sat me in the front row. This is not, I'm talking about this, I'm not, not even joking around. Sat in the front row, I looked to the side, there's a sister wearing a bandana just like this on her head. And I looked at her and I was intimidated. <laughs> True story, we're special here. We're special here. And listen, here, but we, we keep it real too. That's another thing. We keep it real. You know, if, if you want to do stuff here, you know, other churches, they'll just support. No matter how you do or what you do, they just kind of clap. We keep it real here. You know what I mean? First comedian tonight. Thank you. 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 Okay, I said, we were like, okay, he's trying. He's trying, he's keeping it real. Don't say, don't ask that question again. You don't ask that question again. We keep it real here. Don't you dare. 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 You know what you can rest 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 you can So this dude came up, he tells me, Pastor Phil, I want to sing a special song. I want to sing a special song. So he says, all right. So I said, he, he, he was like, I know how to sing. I want to sing a special song. I was like, be careful. Our church is, we keep it a hundred. So he was like, no, nah, I'm going to sing a special song and so, to the Lord. So he came on stage. He was like, I want to sing, I'm trading my sorrows to the Lord. So he started. I'm trading my sorrow. I was like, you better trade your vocal cords. You better trade your vocal cords. He was like, yes, Lord, yes. I was like, no. And we turned it into the pile of here. We were still up. I started going like that. I jumped on stage and I promenaded him. I grabbed that mic from his hand. I grabbed that mic from his hand. And I said, that's not how we do worship here. You know how we do worship here? Like this.
Let's see that. Just, uh, <laughs> so, in actuality, I really have a good marriage. That makes for great sermons, but horrible comedy. So I have to make that stuff up. So I was, all of that stuff, when I, when I do comedy, I always talk to my wife first, and I run it, you know, so I do the act in front of her. So she's doing all of that stuff. So she made a deal with me. She said, Phil, you could do that if on your Instagram account, you will put up the picture we took when we were dating of you hiding around the tree. If you're on Instagram and you're not following me, I'm at Phil Bonanno. I'm gonna put, after the show, I'm gonna put my peekaboo picture up. She said, feel free to put whatever comments you wanna put up. Um, so, y'all been an awesome audience. Thanks for listening.